is up my ninjas and stridents and I am back with another video. Today we are taking a look at Mythic Legion's Gorgo Aetherblade. This is all courtesy of ODC that's me. He hooked me up. Got a, a nice price on one. I've been uh, real slow to pull the trigger because these guys are going for insane prices and I have so much to say about that after the you know the review. You know, somewhere in the review. But thank you, ODC. Thank you. You already know that's my homeboy. Um, let's get this thing going. So, Vorgus. The reason why I chose this guy is uh, I just love the, the look. Mythic Legions is uh, done by the Four Horsemen. They did uh, some of the Motu classics and they did DCUC as well as the original Motu and several other lines by Mattel. And all of them have worked for many of the other toy manufacturers in the industry. Um, so this is just their high fantasy line that's kind of like their Motu. <clears throat> um, so far, I like the majority of the designs on both sides, the good guys and the bad guys. This guy's supposed to be a villain. Um, I like the packaging, you know me, normally I don't talk about the packaging, but I figure since you're not going to see very many of these on my page, or on my channel, I don't know why I still say that, on my channel, I'm going to show you the packaging so you can see. It's very bare bones, very straightforward, it's nothing to write home about. It is kind of cool because there are tabs on the bottom, and if you remove the tabs you can just slide the backing out, and that way you can open your figure, and if you want to put them back in there, you can put them back in there, but I mean look at them. So it's so simplistic. I don't know why you would want to have your figure displayed as such, but beautiful artwork on the front and back uh, shows a couple of the other figures in the wave corresponding to the figure that you have, and the write-up of the whole saga is there. Uh, once you get the figure out, this is what you will have, more or less. You know, I will get into the accessories later on because there's more accessories technically. They're on the figure but I didn't separate them here. Um, everything just looks nice. He's an intimidating looking character and not just because of the height with the horns or antlers. It's more just the, the color combination and the possibilities for the kind of stance you can give this guy. He's a very imposing looking character. That's some badass armor. Um, my uh, A gripe that's not part of my, you know, nitpicks and, you know, problems and issues would be that the armor needs to be very individualized and instead what we have is a lot of characters share this armor you know just the color combinations are different and for me eh, that's another reason why I'm not going to get that many of them because I don't want to have a whole collection full of the same armor but different colors you know what I'm saying that does not fly for me but uh, I mean unless they're like you know, Sentai characters and whatnot. But at first glance, when I was looking at this guy, a lot of things came to mind, but what I had in mind was to make him look more like Strident. Because he does very much, you know, look along the I lines dig that. of Strident. You know what I mean? I, I have to do that. You know, and I don't have much to do to make him look like Strident. He just does. So, you know, there's that. So as I was saying earlier, the sculpt, the paint is beautiful. That's one thing that the, uh, one of many things that the Four Horsemen excel at. Paint apps that just blow away a lot of the competition. You know what I mean? Uh, designs that require paint apps that blow away the rest of the competition. You're looking at a design with all kinds of trim, with color combinations that are non-metallic and metallic. You're looking at types of paint that you typically don't see on mainstream action figures. Now, as far as the sculpt goes, there's a point I want to make about the sculpt overall. Even though it's intricate and it's very detailed, nothing here screams independent project. And I, it makes me wonder why Mattel didn't back these. I think these would have been a nice welcome change in stores and uh, with the exception of maybe the demons and I can't even say that because McFarland has made a killing selling the devil and other characters you know male Bolgia and shit 
in retail. So, you know, I can't really see that being the reason why these didn't go to retail, but the paint apps, the, the, the limited articulation, everything feels like a retail line. So it's surprising to me that they didn't get this going retail wise. But like I said, everything here is masterfully done and you shouldn't expect anything less from Four Horsemen. Uh, the sculpt itself, a lot of the parts, like you see here, I only have one shoulder pad on. I'm going to get to that too. Uh, the, the, the little wash, it's a very subtle wash on the horns to give them the bone look. We had similar uh, paint apps on uh, Scalox in the um, DCUC line, that Green Lantern wave that they had. Um, the little bits of gold trim that you're seeing everywhere. It's just well done. You know, you can't really, you can't complain. Yes, it's limited number of colors, but the way the color is handled, it's it's pretty well, it's, it's, it's nice, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, look at the little wheel things that are on the shoulder pads connecting to the uh, chest plate. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. You look at all the little line, you know, details and embellishments all over, like the stripe going down the center of his chest. It's dope shit. It's the kind of shit that makes you see why these guys, uh, they make things and people jump at them because it's just really well done, you know? Look at the difference in texture. They are masters of that where you can tell this is skin, this is leather, this is spandex, this is metal. You know what I mean? They, they master that shit. Um, I don't know. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with their sculpts. I'm always impressed with their sculpts. I've come to expect a certain level of quality from the Four Horsemen, which is why I even kept tabs on this line for as long as I have. Because, you know, initially I had no interest when I heard it was going to be, I think they were four inch figures initially. For a minute, I was like, oh, shit, that's going to be awesome because then they'll, they won't cost as much and you can probably get a whole bunch of them. Then I saw the prices not changing and I was like, what? And then there was the people clamoring for six inch figures and they said, fine, we're going to fucking change it, make them six inch figures and add a different gimmick. But everything's dope. I can't complain. They used cloth for the capes. So another thing I'm going to get into when I get into the accessories, but everything looks so good. It just looks so good. And there's so many little options with how you can, you know, use the, the different uh, pe certain pieces of the characters. And I like that. Um, a lot of the sculpt gives way to pretty decent articulation. And I feel like for the prices that you see them going for, like these guys, if you're buying them off of the store horsemen, you're going to pay about 35 per figure. I think, well, I want to say 25 to 35 per figure because there are a couple figures that aren't as popular that are going for 25, but everything's p pretty much 35 and up, uh, online, like on secondary markets, uh, it's stupid. I mean, this figure by himself sometimes is going for 80 or 90 bucks, sometimes 100 bucks, but it's usually like 80 and up. It's like, what the fuck for? Seriously? They're not that rare, especially with the horsemen having a kind of a, uh, a situation in which they can uh, uh, replenish their stock, you know, and still sell to us from their store directly and not just through the Kickstarter which it shows that people are, you know, capitalizing and fans are just eating it up because that's always how they've done it. They're not paying attention to the fact that there is a discrepancy between buying it directly from the guys who make it and buying it from a second source, as you know, a, a third party. But, you know, I don't know what to say. I, I like what I see, though. Now the accessories. This guy comes with some nice accessories. Um, nothing really to write home to mom about, you know, it's nothing like that's going to blow your mind, but they're nice. A lot of these things, they're, they're subtle. The paint apps on them is what sets them apart from everything else. They have beautiful paint apps. Uh, and they didn't go overboard, although there are some things I wish they would do. One of the things, though, I'm really impressed with it was something that was lacking in a lot of other lines, even Motu, is their shields. Motu gave us shields that just clip on, and a lot of times you could see the stress on the clip. 
I mean, within one or two times posing it, you add stress. This is not that kind of clip. It's a clip on a peg that can turn around so you can just angle the shield how you want it. Now my gripe comes in the form of the sword. Why does the majority of the figures come with this sword? Why would a character that's supposed to be the villain, like I know he has a sword because they do these weapon packs, but why would you not just put that sword, package the sword with the character? You know what I mean? Like you could at least do things like that. This generic sword shit where everybody has a generic sword, why not just have that be in there and then the bonus is that you give him the specific sword that's for him. That would be awesome. Um, I don't like when they do stuff like that because then they, now you're going to go and spend, and I get it, it's marketing or whatever, but it's kind of frustrating for me because now i got to track down either someone who's willing to part with the sword for a price or a trade, or i got to buy that whole set with stuff that I don't really want to buy and the sword that goes to this character. I mean, it's it's ingenious, it's 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 uh, devious, but you know whatever. Another gripe: the axe, beautifully sculpted, beautifully painted. It even has a nice little gimmick to it. But why make the axe handle so big? The handles are huge, so much so that they stretch the hands of your figure so much that he can't hold the other weapon, can't hold his shield. I mean, his sword any of the swords that have the smaller uh, handles. What was the point of that? You know what I mean? Like you'd think that when they were playing around with the figure and testing it out, they would have played with it enough and seen that, you know, this is kind of problematic for their hands in the long run. Because anytime a weapon is too big for their hands and it stretches the hands enough, there's gonna be stress followed by breakage and usually stress on joints or stretch on a uh, stress on a sculpt leads to breakage. Um, most of your old GI Joes, you saw it with their thumbs, cops figures, Generation One uh, Motu figures. It's just one of those things, you know. Um, the axe though has a very cool gimmick. Just about everything except for that that particular blade can come off on the top of the the head of the axe. So the ruby piece, the ruby point on the top, and the little spike, it comes off. Um, as you can see here, you can replace them, you can either mix and match where you put them, you can do whatever, or you could simply take the extra blade that you have, which is kind of nice that they did this, and uh, you can either put the extra blade on the top, if you want to give them that kind of scoop type thing, or give them just a big wedge for, you know, an axe, or you could just take it, put it on the other side, and then end up with a double-sided battle axe, and then put your point of choice on the top, which is nice. You know, some characters would wield something like that. Um, Attilus, I think his name is, or Attila. I would, I would definitely Atlas. I think his name was. I can't remember. I would make him have a double-sided axe, just because he looks like that kind of brute. You know, uh, the little points, the little spike pieces, they're beautiful. Very well done. Uh, like I said earlier, you could take one of those and put it on the top. There you go. It looks good. It doesn't look artificial. Everything it fits really snug and tight. And even though it's a more brittle plastic that this is made from, it's not brittle enough to the point where just putting the pieces on is going to fall, make the thing fall apart. I prefer the one-sided blade, you know, and the uh, spike on one end and the spike on the top. Or I think I put the two ruby pieces, one on the top, one on the side, and then put the spike at the very bottom so that, you know, he could stab people with it. But I don't even think I'm going to have him use that axe very much due to the large handles. I don't like those or grips. Now, the sword belt. The sword belt is dope because it kind of has a sheath in there. And you know me in weapon storage. That always makes me happy. Um, one of the things that... I like about this and, and I really like about the way that they went about doing this is it's very subtle there's no big sheath to get in the way which is nice you know but given the amount of detail that they put on these figures a sheath probably would have been a better way to do it but this right here is universal you can put this on their shoulder over their shoulder and then they can have their sword on their back and put it on their waist and have their sword traditionally hanging at their side However you want to do it, it works, you know? If you get two of them, you could 
you know, sling two of them over the shoulders, and the sword fits in perfectly. And this is a broad sword, so you know, if this fits, that means all the others fit too. So you know, they 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 did a, a good job coming up with the simplest solution for a lot of these things. You know what I mean? Um, I was impressed with the end result because it looks better than what I expected it to look like. And I mean, you've seen images where swords were slung on people's, in, you know, in a belt, sword belt, less similar to this without a standard sheath, you know, when people were wearing lots of armor. So, you know, it just goes and adds to that whole fantasy vibe and it adds to a, uh, a different fantasy vibe than what you typically see, you know? They didn't seem to fall into any one specific category other than knights, and I love knights. It's even a theme in War of the Gods as far as the designs. So, the cape. You know me. Cloth capes rule is the way it should be, because that's what they are in real life. Forget what anyone else says. Everyone has their little biases and their complaints, but it's a cape. It's supposed to hang. It's supposed to flow. It's supposed to blow around. Big rubber capes are the dumbest shit ever. They always weigh down your figure. They make them fall down in the back of your, you know, knock down shit on your shelf. No, it should always be cloth. Plain and simple, whether or not you think it, dra it doesn't drape right, that's the way it should be. Here, they went a step further integrating the capes with the armor. And there's removable pieces, the shoulder pads. They peg in right there on the back, which is pretty awesome because that way you have control over whether or not you even want to put on a cape. You could have this, you could have two of these guys and just one has a cape and one doesn't. You know what I mean? Um, and there's a feature that you'll see later on that even allows, you know, more customization for, you know, your character. But you could have him as the boss and then have another one and, you know, this one doesn't wear a cape and this one is more of a, uh, you know, a lackey or something. I don't know. But you can see the things you can do with it. I showed you earlier he was wearing the full, both shoulder pads and the cape was fully, you know, connected. Here you have it only on one shoulder, only partially connected. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things. You have freedom, you know, and along with the next piece, which is the gimmick that I'm going to show you, you have a lot of freedom to practically customize your figure, you know, at least color-wise. To some degree, I guess, you know, the parts, there's some different parts on some different, you know, characters that work together for the benefit of the whole. And, you know, this plays into it. So the gimmick here is that these guys are almost all the way modular. A pretty dope idea, if you ask me, because no one has done this, except for, you know, like the... WWE uh, create a superstar figures and those superhero mashers and stuff, but they're always done in a childish kind of goofy way with the exception of the WWE ones and this. Here, you can take most of the figure apart so that there are little things that you can make better match, you know, better boots, better shoes, better uh, knee pads or something like that. I think the knee pads you can remove on certain figures. Um, I could be wrong. Um, and I don't know if the legs can come apart. I haven't seen people do that yet. I'm sure you could boil and pop all of it, but these parts, all of them have pegs about that big. Uh, what you see there with the ankle, which is pretty thick, you're not gonna break that unless you try. And uh, with a little bit of elbow grease, you can pop everything loose, even the head. This goes back to what I was talking about with the cape, no cape, master, subordinate. You could have uh, a skull knight, take the head off of one of the skeletons, put it on this body, and don't give him a cape. You know what I mean? You could put one of the demons on that body and then give him a, a flowing crazy cape, you know what I mean? But in the horns, you can even change the horns. So, and that's what I plan on doing once I get the blood armor. Um, but so much of the figure is, you know, modular and interchangeable, so you can get a, a different look at these characters if you want, you know what I mean? And I think that's pretty damn dope. It's a smart way to get a little bit more out of, you know, very simplistic designs to some degree. Not to say that these are all simplistic, but in comparison to a lot of other things, which I'm going to get into here in a, in a few minutes, uh, in comparison to many other lines and other sculpts, these aren't the most 
detailed sculpts, but you can have a lot of fun as far as mixing color combinations, armor, no armor, because there's a lot of characters that have bare arms or bare legs or something like that. You can switch up what you want to switch up and you will get some interesting combinations. I've already seen a ton of awesome ones online. So props to them for that. All right, let's do the articulation. Ball joint at the head. You look up that much. You can look down, great deal as well. That's uh, standard, you know, looking forward. You uh, can tilt to the side if you need that. Left to right with no problem. This does not get in the way. As you can see, it's soft, it's pliable, so you can move it however you want. The hand, arms move up that much. If you have a shoulder pad, like on this side, the shoulder pad kind of gets out of the way, so you can still move his arms up that high. It's just a pin disc shoulder, like what we get with, you know, DC UCs, Marvel Legends, a lot of NECA figures, etc. No bicep swivel, but there is a swivel at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, well at the glove, and then again at the wrist, and then there is a hinge so you can get that if you need that uh, the waist is on a ball joint so you get all kinds of beautiful motion legs go up this high which is amazing for a suit of armor considering you have marvel legends that do not have armor on and can't do this so you know me i love this because then you know that turns into that not that a knight will be doing that, but if he's strident, he would. Um, so, you know, this is kind of where I'm going with this guy. Uh, knee, he's got a bend at the knee, it's 90 degrees. Swivel at the thigh, as well as at the knee. Oh, uh, yeah, see? What to say, it's not there. <laughs> then you got like kind of a ball socket hinged joint so you can pull the legs or the foot forward point the foot you can also do the pivot and it's a deep pivot so like if you're doing a split you know they can have their legs flat on the floor so you got a great deal of articulation oh and the horns move as well quality shit man quality shit So as I said before, Gorgo is a badass dude. This line is a badass line. But if you're like me and you like knights, it seems to be a thing for you, you'll have sculpts that are better. And you'll have figures that have crazier sculpts that have better articulation. Now I mentioned the price. These figures go for insane prices. Single figures sometimes on eBay and Amazon are going for over a hundred bucks, as is the case with 95% of what the Four Horsemen put out. But you see Garo right there, you know what I mean? None of them look that good, and none of them have Garo's level of articulation. So, no matter what this gimmick is, no matter what, no matter who sculpted them, no matter what the situation is, it's not actually as good of a figure as the price tag would have you believe yes it's a kickstarter i get it technically they're one of a kind of items you're not going to get a whole bunch of these for a long time or maybe you will the way that it seems things are going they replenish their stock which means they make more of the same figures they're utilizing the casts and molds etc etc so you're going to get these for a while um he looks cool but knight looks more uh, original you know what I mean? And it's survived, the knife survived. Looks more, uh, what's the word? Unique, I guess is where I'm going for it. Even without the survive mode, the power, the downward, powered, uh, you know, the basic mode. <laughs> he looks, still looks pretty damn unique. Even with the bat motif, some people say, it's Batman, but he doesn't actually look like Batman, but he's borrowing from that same motif. Bats exist. A lot of characters, if they want to, they can do that. Um, 
even when you have characters like Saber, you know how, how much I love this figure. This figure is still one of the best figures in my collection. And just her simplistic, but very functional and very badass design, you know, and the fact that she's still with big old shoulder pads, big chest plate, she still has awesome articulation, you know? Uh, same thing with uh, Kamen Rider Ixa. Look at Ixa's design, it's a future knight. You know what I mean? Sword with a gun built into the, the blade or the, the hilt of the um, sword. Um, the chest piece has more tech shit going on on it. I mean, it's just a beautiful design. Vorgus isn't to that, that level. None of them are. But they're going for, you know, 80 to 100 plus on the secondary market. It doesn't make sense. And then it brings me all the way back to Garo. Garo is a classic knight design with uh, Asian influences built into a European standard knight's, uh, uh, you know, suit of armor. And, you know, so, so the aesthetic is kind of a multicultural uh, vibe. You know, you get a multicultural vibe from this design. And, you know, even though it's a wolf, it still doesn't look like something you saw running around Europe. You know, it looks more like old statues you saw of, different deities in the Asian pantheon, in China's pantheon, you know what I mean? In, in Thailand's pantheon, you know what I'm saying? In Japan's uh, pante pantheon, you know what I mean? Like he's kind of got a demonic, kind of scary face, but he's the good guy, you know? They didn't go that far with the mythic legions yet, you know, and I'll say Garo figures do typically go for a high price. So they're kind of matched in that respect. But I mean, just look at the difference. You know what I mean? There's like a whole nother world of detail here. So I'm not 100% blown away. I know ODC is probably shaking his head and there's probably people like, but honestly, it's like no comparison. Um, every inch of this guy has paint detail and, and you know, varying uh, uh, textures and such. And then he still maintains all this articulation. But... Now I'm going to go to the thing that pisses me off the most. This is my biggest issue. Articulation. If you're going to carry a broadsword, it's a two-handed blade. You need to be able to hold it with both hands. Now I tweaked and moved around and tried to figure out the tolerances for his shoulders because these figures are built so you can play with them. Uh, and you can't. You just can't do it. For whatever reason, they didn't think about making the upper pectoral piece go in more or building in a butterfly joint into the shoulders of the figure so that they could reach their blade in front of them with two hands you know and this is just hold the blade with two hands i'm not even talking about grip it in a fancy pose like i did in the uh, saber 2.0 video where she had the blade uh you know cocked to the side in front of her face and she was still holding it with two hands every figure that i showed you on this in, in the, com the comparison they all can do what she was doing. The wrists can move on a ball joint and a hinge, so they can grab the blade in any way you want them to grab it. And they have double jointed elbows and double uh, jointed or segmented shoulders so that they can actually, you know, utilize a shoulder. He doesn't really have a shoulder joint, you know what I mean? He has like one, one just a basic pin and swivel, and that's it. This can work for some, and it doesn't totally kill the figure, I'm just saying that for the price that they're asking online, and I know that's not the Four Horsemen, but this is what fans have deemed an appropriate price for these figures, it's bullshit. You know what I mean? It's bullshit. So, you know, if you do like one-handing, you know, characters single-handing their, their broadswords, then hey, here you go. And that's cool. He looks cool still. But for me, I need a little bit more in, the, in terms of articulation. And you get a lot of articulation, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, I think you need to get more out of this guy's figure, you know? The bottom line. Very simple. This is a beautiful figure. It's very cool, I think, in small dosage. Uh, there are people who got, did the all-in package, and I don't honestly see the benefit of having... 50 something figures that all the majority of them have the same body you know what i mean like that just feels a little bit cheap and it it, it doesn't 
it doesn't do them justice. If there were less figures, then the prices being where they are would make sense. Uh, the designs would stand out more because you wouldn't have seen the same armor design more than, you know, two, two times maybe, three times maybe, but you, you're seeing it at least 20 times in the line. Different paint apps, but it's the same fucking armor. There's even a basic knight that looks, it's the same armor, different head, and I think a different type of cape, different colored cape, and they come in different hues and all that stuff, but it's the same design with, without the horns, without the, you know, one thing, you know, different boots, that's it. Different paint jobs, of course, that's it. But if that doesn't bother you, and this is a, a perfect fantasy line for you to jump in on, if you're like me and you've been collecting sword and sandals stuff for a long time, then this may not be a big deal and you might cherry pick a couple here and there that are unique amongst the overall line and, you know, then keep it moving and find, you know, other armored characters and other fantasy characters from other lines to build up your collection. So, you know, definitely this is a quality figure. I just don't think that the figure and the prices match, you know what I mean? But uh, from what I've been hearing, the horsemen do replenish their stock at the store horsemen, so you will be able to get them for 35 bucks. You just gotta make sure you get on that shit and stay on top of it. So this has been my look at Gorgo Aetherblade by the Four Horsemen in the Mythic Legions line. This is my story and I'm sticking to it. And uh, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Peace outside.